Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Amber Pond. It's a 5 by 7 I painted this a couple, maybe two, three weeks ago. I've been sitting on it. It's one of these ones I thought, yeah, I like this. I want to share it, but you know. I always uh, tend to share the things I'm uh, super enthused about that are really new, close to some video thing. But there's lots of times that for one reason or another I wasn't able to paint. And that's when I go digging back into the uh, the pile. And actually this painting is worthy. I think it's going to be uh, a nice little uh, painting in someone's home. Now it is loosely based on an old painting that's all I could tell you it was really generic and I uh, had no artist name but it's that steelyard composition and then I noticed <laughs> that I'd done quite a few paintings with that composition recently and that could have been one of the reasons I kind of held off to uh, I just like that composition you know you we're gonna go to certain certain things that we're comfortable with or that would feel right to us and obviously that always feels balanced and right to us you know one of the things though that like a lot of artists are totally comfortable with that I find uh, to be uh, you know something that makes me a little uncomfortable visually not you know psychologically or anything um, this painting had that like you see how I took all the shapes off of our left side you know as I'm painting here that big main tree mass well, a lot of painters would just leave a big old gap there, and they're fine with it. They think it looks fine. To me, it feels like a gully. I think it creates mm, yeah, a bit of, not exactly disharmony, but it's like, it's not as, uh, I look for, I'm doing a great job of communicating, eh? <laughs> I look for a certain flow, a certain feeling with the composition and if it isn't there you know it and if it isn't there you you work on getting it as best as you can and there's always trade-offs and compromises that's just the nature of uh, well life and visual art you know the thing is i think is to keep uh, moving along now a lot of people recently i've had given them the advice to do compositional studies this what you see right here would be a compositional study that was done with one color uh, we're working on a board uh, but you could even do something like this on a bit of, of paper frankly you can uh, you can prep the uh, the not super thin paper but you know regular you know sketchbook type paper that's fairly thick uh, you can prep it with the transparent gesso you can paint with oil right on top of it and frankly if you're just doing little compositional studies and uh, yeah, who cares you know this is the thing it doesn't have to be um, for the uh, all the all-time uh, thing although uh, I will admit that everything I do I'm always looking at that as a factor but I am old also and um, been doing art for a long time I've hung on to a lot of stuff from when I was a kid I've gotten rid of tons of things that I thought were lesser, you know. But uh, sketches, things like that, it's not that they're lesser. It's just that, you know, you have to put in the hours. You have to put in the time to really understand comprehension. There's no, there are a few shortcuts here. You know, I talked about that in my last video, you know. You've got the, uh, you can buy uh, Edgar Payne's book and he'll go through some of the basic compositional motifs. It would be very valuable to have that book actually and um, just make copies of some of his little compositional motifs. Uh, one of the biggest values of that would just be thinking in, in pure terms of composition because there are so many aspects of painting to wrangle with that uh, like right now you've seen that we're doing the sky that's all colors shapes and values right there wasn't I didn't even work out much in the composition of course uh, in the sky of course there is composition there if I had uh, to uh, didn't have a good balance of shapes and colors um, it would detract from the painting and and thus I would have a, a lesser work of art on my hands you know 
but um, yeah you want to do those do those sketches and uh, that's the other thing a lot of people uh, you know they've given us uh, as moderns a sort of a disease and that disease is called uh, modern art <laughs> and modern artists and it, what it entails is like a lot of people thinking they can do something great without putting in any time it's that simple why is it great? Oh, because uh, it's got philosophy in it or it's got political significance or whatever. A bunch of things that absolutely, I guarantee you, won't matter to two or three generations down the line. It, at that point, you're better off having had focused on making your art beautiful because that will resonate with somebody. Okay, we got the book. Hey, The book has a lot of uh, teaching and learning in it and uh pretty much everything i i learned for the first uh 12 13 years of my painting journey it's 60 bucks international shipping included and uh order one get it i'll get it off to you i just think the physical book is better uh you know i don't really make it available as an electronic book maybe someday never say never sorry for the snark um yeah, I don't know, maybe a little bit of uh, pollen in the air, something like that. Anyway, yeah, you got to put in the hours. And uh, you can put in, you could save yourself a lot of time. Say, uh, you know, if composition is one of your issues, which really it is with everybody starting out. Even me sometimes, you know. Uh, more and more, though, I can spot what's wrong. And that's because of the thousands of paintings I have under my belt now. So I failed. I felt a sting and I won't do that again. And that's basically what I'm talking about learning. So you can really accelerate your learning by just doing little sketches and um, studies that are compositional and getting a sense for, wow, that does feel balanced. I get that now. Why that's good, why that's bad. Same deal with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, you can obviously do little stays after Edgar Payne, but um, you could go through any any book of uh, master paintings and make little um, little compositional sketches, yeah. Or even better now, because that's only one. Well, I say that's a good exercise, but the thing with painting is that you have to bring along all the aspects all the time. You know, you've got your composition, you've got your drawing slash rendering. Now, some people, I've had people come into my studio with a straight face, at my publicly accessible studio, and, and tell me that uh, they can paint, but they can't draw. You know, come on. Drawing is, is built into painting. Painting is just colored drawing at the end of the day. That's how you want to think about it. Don't make it to be something it's not. Now, <laughs> there's a lot more involved with painting than just drawing, right? You know, it's it's like drawing on steroids. And But at its foundation, you cannot separate it from the drawing. You have to draw. And uh, skill with drawing will equate into skill with painting. Now, there's a lot of other things to wrangle with. You got the value structure. Now, that's pres present in drawing as well. But in painting, the value structure and the color structure, they are um, linked together. You can't really separate one from the other. And uh, But, you know, you can always uh, take a black and white photo of a painting. And, uh, well, I really don't like black and white photos of color paintings. I tell you, that's one of the reasons why... I, I never really liked uh, the art books until the modern era. It was always a disappointment to me uh, to have to deal with a bunch of black and white reproductions of color paintings. However, that said, if it works as a color image, it works because the value structure makes sense, is congruent. The compositional structure makes sense and is congruent. And then the the third part of the the the, um, the trinity there the color makes sense and is congruent so you've got those three aspects and you got to bring them along all the time all at the same time oh you also have aspects like uh, brush handling uh, uh, texture right there's a lot 
landscape painting is very involved but I think very fulfilling and now there's a lot of other things you can paint ways you can paint you can paint people or flowers or you know cars or oh anything really I, I choose to focus on landscape painting because I I like to be able to um, express myself with color values shapes and form and I don't want to be constrained with a lot of uh, representational uh, uh, agendas right so if you're doing people it needs to either look like the person that you're doing or at least look like a person right animals animals can be real tough you know especially if you haven't spent a lot of time studying the uh, the animal anatomy or how animals move and things um, and I, I've drawn a lot of animals but I can't say I'm an expert at it you know I'm not a natural you know I, I I knew a lady or a girl I should say yeah, I was a, in junior high school um, this uh, this lovely young lady was in my um, my vocational center graphics class and uh, she could draw a horse doing anything it was amazing jumping running walking standing she was amazing she was amazing you ever want to laugh you know, ask me to draw you a horse without some reference. Even with the reference, I think it's a bit of a struggle. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't said much about this painting. There's a lot of color in it. Uh, and uh, the reason I went with Amber Pond, it just struck me as being a good title, you know. Um, it's kind of uh, almost, it's almost a uh, complimentary bit of a scheme because of the orange and the blue. Um, we're sort of we're sort of uh, and we have the violets and stuff I put into the landscape and I ended up kind of uh, that you can see that very strong violet I put there in the trees and I ended up like just kind of working that out and that's something you can do sometimes too you can uh, many times I'll do that I'll throw something down in the painting that's a bit too strong and then just work it out and once it's worked out it's definitely got a lot more interest than something that would have been completely safe all the way through now that said I'm not a uh, real extreme sort of painter um, okay uh, also I think you know payoff in this uh, painting is this uh, reflections of the rocks and things I can't say I did the ultimate brilliant job there but I did a competent job it's a saleable painting um, a bit of abstraction of course in the tree shapes and I can't avoid it I just embrace it um, I was happy with my decision and uh, now you can see by the way the uh, the reference image that I painted this from uh, in the members area that's six bucks a month and there are hundreds and hundreds of real-time uh, videos there uh, most of them a lot of them are in 4k there's no ads and uh, you can kind of just have me going on in the background real time and I think that's valuable. I, I think this format's valuable too, where I'm just basically talking about stuff uh, that comes into my uh, noggin as uh, we are both watching this painting come together. Uh, but the uh, members area of the live stuff is different. It's different because the painting's actually going on. So you might have a lot less insights. You might have a lot less actual mm, valuable teaching in a sense but uh, in another sense any teaching coming down the line is extremely valuable because it's happening in real time so uh, that insight is sort of uh, you know pregnant with meaning because it's actually happening in real time on the painting surface and let's face it that's what it's all about you want to be a painter you got to make paintings you know <laughs> What does that sound revolutionary, that idea? I know, it's so funny. You have a lot of painters that don't make very many paintings, but I try to make as many as I can, and if, uh, like, I'm going on a few days with no painting here, I start to get weird, and I start to really want to do something. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for t this nice midweek video. Um, as far as the live streams, I'm still kind of having some health. Uh, you, know, you know, I'm okay, but not really um i'm not really planning on doing any live streams this weekend but we'll get back into it at some point uh, you know feedback from the uh the, the audience there will probably be uh would be helpful as far as getting me to do that anyway until i come back with another video
please leave me a comment. Yep. And um, if you like this video, uh, take good care. Stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family. And fight the power.